We didn't grow up uh, with the sense that where we were was where we were going to be. You know, we grew up with the sense that where we were almost didn't matter because we were becoming, it, we were becoming right. something greater. The separation of talent and skill is one of the, 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 the greatest misunderstood concepts for people who are trying to excel, who have dreams, that want to do things. Talent you have naturally. Skill is only developed by hours and hours and hours of beating on your craft. I've, I've never really viewed myself as particularly talented. Where I excel is ridiculous sickening work ethic you know while the other guy's sleeping I'm working while the other guy's eating I'm working there's no easy way around it no matter how talented you are your talent is going to fail you if you're not skilled mm -hmm. you know if you don't study if you don't work uh, really hard and dedicate yourself to being better every single day mm -hmm. you'll never be able to communicate with with people with your artistry the, the way that you want mm -hmm and how much I had to believe in myself in order to make these things happen. I kind of, I feel like you can will yourself into a good space. Mm -hmm. like, things that are meant to happen will. And if you believe in yourself enough, you can help yourself learn. You can inspire you know, yourself in different ways where you can actually discipline yourself, mm -hmm. you know, to the point that you can become good enough. Like from 97, like when I started writing, it was, full time like every day I was writing music because I had no choice if I was gonna stop hustling then how was I gonna provide or create continue the lifestyle that I created for my son's mom my son and myself mm -hmm. and it was a time that I, I actually didn't have anything because the things that I acquired when I was hustling it kind of went away I had to get rid of it in order to have enough to stay afloat you know and Things don't happen when you want them to happen all the time. It happens when it's supposed to happen. When God has a plan for you to actually be successful, it'll, it'll happen for you. So you got to be persistent and consistent and work and work and work until it actually works. And that's why I was persistent enough and consistent enough to exist now. One summer, his dad tore down a brick wall on the front of his business and told 12-year-old Will and his 9-year-old brother to rebuild it, a job they said was impossible. It took them a year and a half, but they did it. And he said, now don't you ever tell me it's something that you can't do. You don't try to build a wall. You don't set out to build a wall. You don't say, I'm going to build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall that's ever been built. You don't start there. You say... I'm going to lay this brick yeah. as perfectly as a brick can be laid. Yeah. And you do that every single day. And soon you have a and wall. And soon you have a wall. So all I want you to do when you look at your dream, you say to yourself every day, it's possible. You say that every day to yourself, it's possible. Because what does that do? See, it begins to change your belief system. See, the way in which we operate, ladies and gentlemen, it's a manifestation of what we believe, what's possible for us. Whatever you've done up to this point, all that it really is, is a duplication, it's a reproduction of what you believe subconsciously that you deserve and what's possible for your life. Greatness is not this um, wonderful, esoteric, elusive, uh, God-like feature that only the special among us are, will ever taste. You know, it's something that truly exists in all of us. Most people operate out of their personal history, out of their memory, things they've done, things they've experienced, things they've seen, things that they have observed. What I'm suggesting that you operate out of a larger vision of yourself. I want you to see yourself doing what you want to do, experiencing what you want to experience it, having what you want to have, doing what it is that gives your life some meaning and value. Operate out of your imagination, not your memory. You have to believe that something different than what has happened for the last 50 yeah, million yeah, years right. of history. You have to believe that something different can happen. Yeah. Confucius said, uh, he who says he can 
and he who says he can't are both usually right. Being realistic is the most commonly traveled road to mediocrity. Why would you be realistic? What's the point of being realistic? Just put up a barrier. Yeah, I'm going to do it. It's done. It's already done. The second I decide it's done, it's already done. It's right. Now we just got to wait for y'all to see. It's unrealistic to walk in a room and flip a switch and lights come on. That's unrealistic. Fortunately, Edison didn't think so. It's unrealistic to think you're going to bend a piece of metal and fly people over an ocean in that metal. That's unrealistic. But fortunately, the Wright brothers and others didn't, didn't believe that. And it just, seems, it, it just seems like such a ridiculous idea to me to embrace the idea that it's not going to happen. And that's not real for that to happen. As soon as you say it, now you just made that real. Our thoughts, our feelings, our dreams, our ideas are physical in the universe. That if we dream something, if we picture something, if we commit ourselves to it, that that is a physical thrust towards realization that we can put into the universe. That the universe is not a thing that's going to push us around. That the world and, and people and situations are not something that's going to push us around. That we are going to bend the universe and command and demand that the universe become what we want it to be. Because whenever you look at where you want to go, I'm wanting to warn you, you will have some conversation back here after you go through the data that you've experienced in life saying you can't do it. And so what you want to begin to do is ignore that inner conversation. Well, most people, ladies and gentlemen, when something happens to them, what they do is they begin to believe that that's the way it is. That's the way it's always been. And they can't see the possibility of it being any different. Example, before April 1954, the common belief, the universal belief, because it had been tried again and again and again and people had failed, the belief was that man was not physically capable of breaking the four-minute barrier, that he could not run a mile in less than four minutes. That was the belief on the planet. It had never been done. But here's what happened, ladies and gentlemen. Roger Bannister came along, and he broke the four-minute barrier. Now, here's what's significant about that. Since that time, up to this day, over 20,000 people have done it, including high school kids. What changed? 20,000 people, what changed? Here's what happened when they got on the track. They knew it had been done. And because they knew it had been done, there was a new belief about this barrier, about this goal that was unreachable. And those 20,000 people got in a race believing, knowing in their heart that someone had done it, that it's possible that they could do it. And I'm saying that if you know anybody that had some goal, some dream, something they wanted to do, and they did it, then I'm saying that you know in your heart that if someone has done it, then you can do it. It's possible. But every single day when I come, I show up and I let failure know failure is not an option. So what? It takes 12 years to get it for failure is not an option. So what? I, 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 I put myself in a Ph.D. program when I know that to be a great person in the Ph.D. program, you have to read well, you have to write well, which are my two greatest weaknesses. But failure is not an option. If somebody if anybody's ever gotten a Ph.D. before for my community, it means I can do it. Failure is not an option. You can't even let it sink into your brain into not even a second. You have to know that this thing is going to work. Come hell or high water, whatever it is that I set out to do, it may not happen in six months, it may not happen in a year, it may not happen in two years, but at some point, my dream is going to become a reality. And that if someone can make their dream become a reality, that it's, it's possible that you can make your dream become reality. And so as you begin to look at where you want to go, beginning to embrace that, it's possible. I'm blessed and highly favored. 
I've got a lot going for me. I've got some good stuff in me. And it's possible that I can bring my greatness out here in the universe. That I can do what I want to do. It's possible I can write my own book. I can have my own business. I, I can take the trip and travel around the world. It's possible. I can bounce back from adversity and reinvent my life. It's possible, regardless of where I am, that things can get better for me. It's possible. And I'm thinking about two men right here in Chicago who are fairly successful, similar background, educated. They worked for a corporation for many years, and they were among many people that were laid off. Two guys who were very good friends. One went out looking for a job for several weeks, along with the other one, and they faced disappointment and rejection again and again and again. They couldn't find any work, which is the story of many people across this country. One guy stopped. He became discouraged. He stopped going. He stayed home looking at television, became very argumentative and toxic with his wife, Drinking beer, getting on the phone, talking to his other negative, unemployed friends. I don't even know what to say to niggas, man. I go to my hood and he's like, yo, what up? I be like, man, get the fuck out of here. I ain't talking to this nigga. What the fuck am I talking to this nigga for? You know what my grandfather told me? You don't get as far as the motherfuckers you talk to for no reason. You'll be successful as the motherfuckers that you talk to for no reason. What I mean is, if you spend your day talking to a nigga that ain't got nothing going on, what the fuck kind of information could he offer you? Can he help you learn something? Can he teach you something in the conversation? Leave me the fuck alone, man. That niggas... <laughs> and he just gave up. The other guy kept looking for a job everywhere he could go. Every time he could get an opportunity. Kept asking people, networking, checking the newspapers every day. Kept going everywhere he could, trying to find a job. You have too much education. You're overqualified. You won't be here long enough. He kept going. He kept going. He went to a place and said, look here, I tell you what, if you can't hire me, and I know you can use my talents, abilities, and skills, I don't want to sit home and do nothing. Just, just let me do some volunteer work. You don't have to give me anything, all right? I just want to work. I want to be busy. Guy said, okay, it's on you now, but don't, don't expect me to give you anything. It's okay. This guy came in and worked. He was the first one there. The last one to leave was the best employee there. About four weeks later, one of the top managers quit. They were looking for a replacement. Guess who they selected? This other guy. This guy who was volunteering his time. He got the job. What was the difference between the two men? Eyesight and mind sight. Eyesight is judging on what you see, judging according to appearances. But mind sight is how you interpret what you see. One guy said, it's not possible, it's over, I'm finished. I can't do it. I can't make it. He surrendered. I've faced rejection again and again. I'm not going anymore. There are no jobs out there. But this other guy, he felt that in spite of the no's and rejections, in spite of how bad the economy is, in spite of what the newspapers are saying, that it's possible that somebody somewhere will give me a job. He just kept going, thinking it was possible. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? That's what we have to do with our dreams. I'm motivated by fear. Fear. You know? Um, fear of what? At fear of fear. I hate being scared to do something. And I think what developed uh, in, my, in my early days was the, the attitude that I started attacking things that I was scared of. It was Franklin Roosevelt said the only fear you have to fear is fear itself. Absolutely. Living in a, a house with both of your parents isn't, a, isn't an excuse for you not making it or not having anything initially isn't an excuse to not make it. You know, for me, I don't, I don't see, uh, at this point, I, I tell them good luck if they think they can make me feel like I can't do something that I set my mind on, uh -huh. you know? Because I, I already come so far from where I come from that it's impossible for you to discourage me. Yeah. I've never allowed my fear to limit me. I'll figure out how to get past it. I think everything else is smaller.